I'm Helen Elizabeth, and I'm so excited to be launching another round of your Best New Self 21 Day Challenge. Today I have with me Stephanie O'Brien Martin. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Thank you so much for joining. And so I met Stephanie at um, a Purpose Point event in Detroit. So the Purpose Point is a speaking fellowship that we're both a part of. And so it's kind of connected us and we've gotten to do some interviews and different things. And it's been really exciting. But Stephanie is awesome and she works with women entrepreneurs. I'm going to read you just quickly what her bio is because um, I think it's awesome. So Stephanie helps high achieving and overachieving Christ-centered women, entrepreneurs, and business leaders to follow in alignment with the kingdom rather than force things to happen out of fear, control, and striving. So Stephanie, I think that is an awesome, awesome ministry. And um, I just personally feel like we've talked about this before, but I can get like that. And the fear that we had, and I'm actually going to be sharing Stephanie's eyes interview that we had about fear and how we overcame that. So I'll be looking for that during this 21 day challenge as well. Um, but anyway, so Stephanie, Stephanie and I are going to be doing a Bible study today and it's going to be led mainly by Stephanie. And so she wrote a book called The Messy Middle, which I'll give her a second and then just a minute I'll let her talk about that. But basically it's going to be kind of helping us understand the life of Nehemiah and how his life applies to our life. So Stephanie, why don't you just tell us what this book is about, why you wrote it, and then we can get started with the Bible study. Yeah. So this book was birthed out of a really difficult um, season of my life, if not one of the most challenging ones that I've been through. Um, and that was when I knew the Lord was calling me to start a business. It didn't start that clear at first, but I knew there was something more for me, something I was meant to do. Um, I knew in my heart, like I was going to speak and write books and all of that. And I was 22 years old when I really started getting this sense and in inner knowing. And I'm like, I have no idea how to do that. And like at the time I was in college and, um, I really knew nothing about entrepreneurship or creating or building anything. <laughs> and um, I just thought that that was going to be something that unfolded like maybe midlife in my forties. And like one day that would happen somehow after working up a career ladder. And so I um, was studying social work, got a job as a social worker. Um, and just felt like there were things going on. Like, I just felt like this was off. Like, this is not what I'm meant to be doing with my life. Um, and it scared me because societal life plan for you is to go to college, get your degree, get your job, and live happily ever after. Right. And <laughs> that was not the case for me. So long story short, I... I <sighs> There was a lot of things I had to, to really let go of. One of those being um, a relationship I was in at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very afraid of letting that go. But I knew I needed to let go. And as soon as I did, then just like everything started lining up and opening up and getting more clear of what I was really meant to be doing. And so that's like the very condensed story of how I really even tuned into my calling and my purpose. Yeah, it's a good and one. It's like it's something we all connect with, right? I mean, we all, I think, yeah. being happily ever after with your job and all of a sudden you're like, wait, but I'm not happy or I don't feel fulfilled or I don't, I feel like I'm just striving after the wind, you know, and I, we yeah. all know that in the relationship thing. I've talked a lot about relationships like that. Relationships can hold us at a standstill if it's not what God's blessing, it's not what we're really supposed to be in, you know, so. Uh -huh. I think that's cool. That's also part of your story because that really speaks to a lot of women um, that we don't realize how much relationship yeah. held us back in the past. But anyway. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I don't say that it was my relationship in there, but there, I say something like there was something in my life I needed to let go of. Now you have the inside scoop. It, <laughs> it was my relationship at the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just felt like I needed to share that because I do agree. I think there's a lot of women that settle for being treated less than what God has God's best, mm -hmm. um, less than what they are, um, you know, created and designed to be loved as, 
and um, my relationship was very toxic and abusive and manipulative and just it was terrible yeah. um, and I think that I, I see this a lot I see a lot of women just hold on to it because they think that there's nothing better mm-hmm. um, for it so it took a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting and this can kind of start diving us into Nehemiah as well um, I had people praying for me and the power of prayer, I really believe in the power of prayer. Um, I don't believe I would have gotten out of that relationship without a group of women praying for me and lifting me up. And I myself participated in that because I did want freedom. I just didn't have the strength and the courage and the ability to do it on my own. And by the grace of God, I was I do believe I was I was delivered a day out of that relationship and empowered to um, really step into my calling. And as I was doing that, I was under this belief that what the, the, the process of leaning in and identifying your purpose and calling is a process in of itself. Right. Then I believe that once I identified it, then life would be smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everything would be happy right. dory. Once you figured it out, <laughs> it's all figured out and you know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that 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 it will be life will be just so wonderful and grand and, and sunshine and roses all the time. Because I was in such a painful place not knowing it and living outside of my calling. And then I was like, Well once you find it then everything's great. That's not the case for me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I mean, it was like when I realized that I was meant to um, ha- share this message and help coach people through identifying what their purpose is and what their calling is and leaning into that and living up to that, um, it wasn't, it was so difficult for me. Doors were not opening quickly. Like they did at first, I'll say this. They did at first, and I thought it was going to be forever. Right. But really, I think that was just like God's grace confirming that I'm on the right path. Right. <laughs> but then it, it disillusioned me into thinking, oh, this is just how it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so that's when Nehemiah came in, because I started studying this, his um, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. He... Um, the, the people of God were in a terrible state. Mm-hmm. They were vulnerable. Um, they weren't even really like considered a threat to anybody because they didn't have their wall. Their wall was right. fortress for protection. And they were once this mighty people with, you know, the most high God. And then like they're completely vulnerable, completely exposed, living in a state of humiliation. Mm-hmm. And this broke Nehemiah's heart, seeing that God's chosen people were living in the state. It absolutely broke his heart. And um, he went in and, and fasted and prayed and pressed in to the Lord, asking for a solution. He repented for his sins and the sins of the people like that really led them to being in that state in the first place. And um, he asked for favor from the king. He asked God to move the king's heart. The king at this time was a pagan king. Mm -hmm. Um, So he didn't really understand having a relationship with one God. Right. Um, (laughs) And and what this even meant. Why don't we define what pagan, in your own words, what does pagan mean? Oh, yes. Sorry. Oh, I'm using the words that the Bible uses, but like, um, yeah, and it's such an old term. I I would say honestly, it's just people that un for t- unbelievers or or people with just different a different belief. At yeah. that time, they believed in many many gods. Yes. Um, and so the concept of one God was very unique culturally perfect. That time. perfect yes i think that's great i just i know that sometimes i can be confused bible words can be confusing yeah yes so, yeah, so pagan can then just be thought of as somebody that is not a one god believer he believed in lots of gods or he just didn't believe necessarily that god was the god of the universe so great. right okay right. good so we're yeah. moving on now yeah thank you for that no, so, 
but yes. um, so he so he prayed that the king's heart would would recognize Nehemiah's passion for these people um, and be moved to help Nehemiah and empower Nehemiah with the resources and the permission to leave. Because at the time, Nehemiah was the cup, the king's cupbearer. Mm -hmm. So he was a servant of the king. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a huge point because in my, with the clients I work with, I work with a lot of women who really do feel moved very passionately to help a group of people. And they are a afraid to invest in that dream or you know sometimes we need resources and to invest in certain things and make certain things happen and um they're afraid to ask their husbands or for the time off or whatever it is they're afraid to ask for what the the people they need that can grant the the permission or agree with them and support them in that by applying resources or whatever that is and they think that they're going to be blocked like they're convinced that like well, I don't think my husband will say yes or I doubt that they'll give me a month off and keep my job or <laughs> there's all this thing, thing. and I think what that goes along with that is that Nehemiah had a really good job what he was doing it was very comfortable where he was at exactly. you know and so yeah. like to think about asking this could be something that caused him to be uncomfortable and to have to do something he doesn't necessarily you know maybe that maybe if the king got mad you know like or if and then all of a sudden that dream was shattered or if he well he might lose that particular job and so i think that's another thing that kept me in my same spot for a long time was that i was comfortable and i was scared that i would fail or that someone would say no and I didn't want to lose that comfort place, right? Yes. yes, exactly. And that stood out to me greatly to see how this even started with Nehemiah praying and really leaning, like, and he did, he, he fasted, he took, he did, like, he leaned into a spiritual practice that is uncomfortable for us yeah. <laughs> to do in the first place and and ask god like please move this and he was just like you said he was willing to let go of his cover i mean a cover like he had he lived at the palace yeah. he had all of his needs met yeah. i mean he he was willing to leave all that comfort of luxury and provision and living in the palace which is probably one of the highest servant jobs right. like and go to the people that had no protection, no fortress, no barrier, and go live and help them. Mm -hmm. And I say this, and just like with my story, how this applies to my life, like I have found over and over again that for every new level we're called to, or every mission or phase of the mission we are called to, we always have to let something go. Mm -hmm. For me, it was this relationship that I had and had to let go of identity and that and all the fears with that and be willing. I was so afraid of being single and alone. I had to allow myself to be single and be okay with potentially never meeting somebody again. Mm -hmm. You know, and for somebody I was afraid of being single and constantly settling for less than relationships. To go from like, you know what, I know this isn't what God has for me. And if I need to be single for the rest of my life, I'm willing to do that. That mm -hmm. takes a lot of courage, just right. like with Nehemiah. Like, I may never come back here. Like, <laughs> I, I, it depends on the key temperament. Like, mm -hmm. if this, this request yeah. cost my life. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so um, we, there's, big, there's big risks and sacrifices and we we need to be willing to let let go of course praying for the protection you know and praying for the provision while doing that in this case um nehemiah was granted that the king saw his heart grieve and granted him the resources he needed the passage the right to passage through the land, the resources, and the tools that he needed. I mean, like, not only was it a yes, but 
let me equip you with everything you need to get this done successfully. Right. And um, that's really, really incredible. And that's the part where, like I say, it can start off as if like, it's like, oh, okay, I got to get up and I got all this, you know, all those resources and the passage. I'm not going to run into any pushback. Like, it all looks great. <laughs> and and it, it started like that. For me, it started like that. But then it's like, once you see what the project is, you're like, oh, <laughs> this is going to be work. This is going to require a lot of help, mm -hmm. a lot of discipline, a lot of self control, and a lot of faith yeah. um, to get this done. Right. And that is where I call it the messy middle of setting out to start something and it seems exciting at first mm -hmm. and but it's a project it's a mission it's work and it's not only smooth sailing you may start off excited just like any new goal we starting to me has never really been hard to do to start it's finishing <laughs> It's finishing and completing when I started. Yes. It's the harder thing. Absolutely. Because the middle happens. The, it's, the, it's hard to get started and then it's hard to finish. I oh, yeah. It's all around. <laughs> I do, yeah. It depends on what it is that I'm starting. I tend to like, okay, like new things excite me. So I'm like, yeah, let's get started. But then I start so many things. <laughs> okay, we got to hone that in. But I. Uh, but the, the hardest part for me is the middle. The hardest part for me is when I'm like, I've already started this, I'm deep into this. The, the excitement and enthusiasm of starting something new has died off. Okay, and now we're in what seems like mon mundane, monotonous, routine, kind of day in, day out thing. Mm -hmm. The end looks nowhere near in sight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bored I'm kind of over it right. yeah. <laughs> and like I just want it to be over with and um and that for me the messy middle is the hardest part for me and um so when I started my business I had a client or a couple clients right away mm -hmm. and then I had none for for months yeah. <laughs> and I was struggling I was struggling financially um, I was struggling now because I lost confidence. I started questioning the vision. I started wondering, did I even hear this right? Right. Is this even what I'm meant to do? Like maybe I got it all wrong somehow. Yeah. Um, and I know Nehemiah, he struggled with a lot of fallout as well. Mm -hmm. so Nehemiah had a workforce that was all enthusiastic with him, like, yeah, let's rebuild it. And he got people to work with him because there's no way he could do this by himself. He uh, yeah. had a group of people to do this. Mm -hmm. And but then there were threats of the enemy trying to say that you're going against the king and like a really a false accusation. Mm -hmm. okay? People misunderstanding what you're doing, people right. being threatened by what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, people just maliciously trying to stop and prevent and hinder what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, he endured all of that. And not everyone that came alongside him in the beginning stayed with him to the end. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, Jesus. <laughs> you know? And um, so he had a lot of his workforce fall out, just being discouraged and afraid, giving into the fear, giving into the accusations and the doubts and the insecurity. And he had to stay so focused. And my favorite part, I have this on the sign in my room. My favorite part of the story is a verse that says, I am doing a good work and I cannot come down. And I have stood on that for every project that I have been called to do. Yeah. And I have to look at that every time the enemy attacks, every time there's destruction, every time somebody falls out, every time I get false accusations, 
it's just like I can either stay up here and stay focused on the mission or I can come down <laughs> and stop the work and give attention to this and stall and delay if not totally kind of sabotage the whole thing. So right. that's a huge verse to stand on. I am doing yeah, good that's work. So good. Mm-hmm. I love that. I am doing good work and I cannot come down. Why should I stop doing what I'm doing to come down to you? Mm-hmm. And that's great because that's honestly how you push back against the enemy because it was the enemy trying to pull him down with all of the tactics and ploys and whatever. And you just stay focused on that. I mean, it's easy to say, very challenging to do, but that level of focus and belief in what you are doing and belief that God will see you through that messy middle mm-hmm. is. And, and look, with Nehemiah, it was 54 days, okay? That doesn't sound like a long, but the way you, it... 54 that's days is long, especially when you're doing manual labor, working hard, you're having to manage everybody. If you think about that, you said, oh, yeah. I just think about like living at that time period, everything you've got to do, that's 54 days of just straight up doing and working and being focused. I mean, that's mentally, I know like I do, I mean, I get to my four days and I'm like, I got to have a break. I can't, yes. you know, I can't do this anymore. You know? Yeah. Yes. And there's a part even in there where like there was so much resistance that the the laborers were had their working tool in one hand and the sword in another. Okay. So they're focused on finishing and completing the mission while protecting themselves against the attack of the enemy. Yeah. At the same time, day and night, they slept in their working clothes. Lord, I mean, like, that's I intense. A great, I think that's a great picture, too, if we think about that and even for ourselves, whenever we think about do, working on anything, if we feel like God's called us to something, to have, like, yeah. be willing to work hard, but also have that sort as in, like, have scripture on our heart and be really invested in God so that we have something to battle it with. Because if you're always working, but you're not filling up, you can't fight that off, right? I just, I visualize that with those workers as people who are, both invested in their relationship with God and have that sword that can say, I can fight off any of these thoughts, but then also I have my, you know, I plow my, whatever I have in my hand and I'm working as well. And that's why I continue working. I think that's a really cool picture there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that when, you know, I, when we are doing something that really brings, glory to God, protects his people, and is a threat to the enemy, we do endure that. Um, And what I really believe God's heart was for this book was so many people tap out. Mm -hmm. So many people get hit financially, even physically. Like there's um, friends, um, people questioning the vision, uh, some of their closest, most trusted advisors then start maybe even doubting a, a, them. And the belief that you have to have that this is what God has asked you to do mm-hmm. is got to be so solid. And there's been many times where, like, I've always had to go back to that because emotionally and circumstantially, Believe me, I wanted to tap out many, many times. I'm like, this is too hard. I'm just going to go get a nine to five. It's so much easier to just kind of coast and do life that way and have my study paycheck. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I like, gosh, people look at me sideways. They don't get what I'm doing. Some of them have said, like, you're only chasing success. You're only chasing fame. You're only trying to make a name for yourself. And like, very, very hurtful hurtful things from people I love people that are close to me um those those are hard things to navigate but I also had to go back and be like no I know that this is my assignment I know this is what I meant to do and I this is where you go to the father and you you say like is any of what they're saying true is there some truth is there something like I'm like 
Right. Where's my heart behind it? Yeah. Like, is there a potential thing I'm portraying or is it more about them and their stuff that they're working through and less about me? And, um, most of the time God was like, just, this is, it's their issues. You know, keep focused on me and my mission. I did call you to do this and I will see you through this. And you've got to cling, even when the fog is so thick, you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. Just know and anchor into his love and his presence and, and knowing that this is what he's asked you to do. Right. That's and that's good. how I've gotten through it. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I love that. So is that basically when, so- when somebody gets this book, is that what they're going to gain? from this, like if somebody buys this book and is looking to purchase this, you know, just kind of what are like some of the kind of main things that we can take away today that can say, this is what we need to know as we move forward for becoming our, trying to become our best selves, um, mm-hmm. trying to get the messy middle. Cause obviously we're working on becoming our best self. We know that we're in a mess. <laughs> you know, we know that we need to work forward and we need to become yeah. better. So what's some, like just some key takeaways you could give us? Oh, yeah, I think um, I mindset. Back. That's why I was kind of looking at some of these on the back of the book. I was just kind of looking at how, like, how to identify what's causing pitfalls and all those things. Uh-huh. I don't know whether to a dream. And, like, I think you kind of hit on all of that. Um, yeah. I didn't know if there was just something, like, one major takeaway or one or two that you could just give us that make us, like, okay, this is kind of what we can keep in mind for these next 21 days and as we read this book. Yeah. I, I, I want to say that there's um, – I think that a lot of the messy middle is really our internal it's, – it's an internal state. It's, it's, um, it's discerning, like, what is – the will of God versus what is selfish ambition. Mm-hmm. Um, what is God saying to us versus what is our own idea? Mm-hmm. Um, and then what our belief our beliefs are. Where are we hindering ourselves? Where are we doubting? Where are we limiting our own selves and disqualifying our job out of fear or because somebody else comes in and says something? Um, to me, for me, that's what I see a lot is that is the messy middle. <laughs> yeah. Is and that the the becoming our best self is um, being brave to look at that. Being brave and honestly looking at is there any truth to what they're saying? Humble yourself and ask God. Don't go to man all the time. Go to go to God and ask, is there truth? And if there is, how can I help me be better? help me change this absolutely um so that's i i would say that that's like the biggest thing is the internal state working through the mindset the limiting beliefs um healing from the wounds of our past or the wounds that even occur while we're building this um and at the end of the day it's pressing in and rising i think through that you you really transform into who you've always been it just all the stuff had to break off of you that wasn't truly part of that Mm -hmm. and you had to go through that that tough messy to to just crack that hard shell Mm -hmm. so your true self can break break through absolutely well I love that and that's so great I think that's great too um, just kind of start the 21 days because that helps us to reflect and kind of say, okay, starting to move before we move forward for these 21 days, opening our hearts and saying, God, what is it? You know, search me. What is it that I need to be focused on? What's causing me to be in this messy state? Help me be honest with myself. Show me. I think it's a great way to start so that you can then do what you're being called to do. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for this and for leading us through this study in Nehemiah. Um, that was so good and saved such a good light and a different way of looking at Nehemiah. I've read Nehemiah several times, um, but you pulled out some things that I just absolutely love that I hadn't noticed before. So tell us a little bit about like where we can get your book. Um, tell us where to find you, where to look you up and all of that stuff before we leave today. 
Yeah, so um, I wish I, it's a long link. If I can give it to you, um, yeah, I'll put that. I can put a link on here so people can follow it. And, yeah, because uh, cur good. Currently, it is available for free. You cover shipping. Mm -hmm. Big shipping in the U.S. is five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get the book itself for free, and. Um, I, that's cheaper than you can even find it on Amazon. So that is a special gift that I'm offering you yeah. guys, but it is a special link in order to get to it. Yeah, you can true. always look it up on Amazon if you'd rather not go that route. If you want to spend more money, you can go on Amazon, uh, but it is available for free for if you cover the cost of shipping and handling, and you get some bonus on um, teams and trainings for me as well. Um, if you go that route as well, so that link will be on like social media and all of that. So my website is movedbypurpose.net, so not dot com dot net, okay. and everything is at Move by Purpose. So on Facebook, okay. it's at Move by Purpose. Instagram is at Move by Purpose. Um, LinkedIn, all of that, Perfect. and then I have um, my YouTube channel called the Surrounded Life Show as well, and that you'll need a link for that too <laughs> yes, so you can send that over to me and i'll include all of that in the notes yeah but what did you say it is it's called again the youtube channel though the, the surrendered life show awesome mm -hmm. and do you have a podcast as well do you have a podcast? used to no i used to so but i, I moved right it now? to okay. yeah the surrendered life show that. Yeah, I used to have a podcast, but right now I'm focusing on video. I do a lot of Facebook Live and then the Surrender Life show on YouTube. So I noticed that a lot of people like engaging with me on video. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I moved from audio podcast to video. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. This has been wonderful, and I think it's perfect for just kicking off this 21 days. Um, everybody, if you want to get in touch with Stephanie, I highly recommend that you go follow her, that you get her book. I'm excited. I'm going to be reading it with you, so be sure to get it so we can talk about it. And um, thank you. I guess we'll go ahead and call it for the day, but thank you, Stephanie, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you. All right. Thank you. Bye.